right at the edge of where hardwood forests come to an end. There's a swath right here, and then we see a conifer plantation beginning here. This conifer plantation, judging by the size of the trees, was begun about 15 to 20 years ago. Now I want you to take a close look at the foliage in this swath before the conifer plantation begins. We have various asteriche, we have sarsaparilla, we have bunchberry and bearberry, we have shamrock, also known as meadow sorrel or field sorrel, including sheep sorrel. We have wild strawberry, we have raspberry. Looks like we have a beech tree there with its nuts. We have any number of mushrooms indicating a healthy and varied soil mycelium growing. There's one of the mushrooms right there. This looks to be a variety of Rasula, which I'm not familiar with. We have another mushroom right there. We have an edible bolete right there. Right, o right over here, we have some guild mushrooms, that variety I'm not familiar with. Right here we have another guild mushroom of a variety I'm not familiar with. I don't know guild mushrooms as well as I know the non-guild mushrooms because most of the edible mushrooms are among the non-guild mushrooms. <laughs> but what we see right here is we have a rich diversity of flora. And this diversity of flora, including the tips of the hardwoods themselves, can all provide food for the various fauna from white-tailed deer, rabbits, and other herbivores that might live back in this forest. And omnivores too, including bears. Now, watch this. As we approach the conifer plantation, look at the ground. We're going from healthy soil with a diverse flora to sphagnum moss. See, conifers acidify the soil. Wherever conifers grow, they acidify the soil, and in effect, the acidity counteracts other plants that might compete with them. However, sphagnum moss can tolerate acidity. Now, sphagnum moss generates its own soil toxins, and so, when it moves over the ground, it takes over entire regions. And it's very common in these conifer plantations. And it's very common in these conifer plantations, you'll see the sphagnum moss go on and on. Sphagnum moss also puts its own toxin in the soil. Very few plants can tolerate that toxin. Bunchberry can, and there's a few others. The conifers and the sphagnum moss tolerate each other very well, and a few mushrooms, namely some of the rasulas, tolerate it, and chanarelles like to grow among the sphagnum moss, but there isn't a whole lot. This is a biologically flat region, which means there is not much biodiversity. Very little of what's growing here has any kind of caloric value, and thus it's almost useless to the wildlife. So the more Nova Scotia woodlands are turned into these conifer plantations, the less of Nova Scotia woodlands there will be to actually feed the wildlife. Notice here, just to the left, we're panning back out over the end of the plantation and how biodiverse that meadow is. And it's like this right into the hardwoods. The hardwoods, of course, have less growing underneath them. During the warmer months, they were much richer, but it's close to the middle of October. There's a lot less growing underneath them, but they're full of biodiversity, rich biodiversity with rich food value. Notice all the blossoms, all the plants still in blossom. I can tell you the names of a number of these plants. We have flat top asterisk right over there. We have the berries of the sarsaparilla. We have fleabane. We have any number of herbaceous plants Heck, in the woodlands over there, we have Canada Mayflower. That plant has long since shed its blossoms, and they've turned into berries, little bright red translucent berries that taste a lot like cranberries. All these things that benefit the wildlife. But notice, 
Notice the herbaceous foliage and the blossoms as we pan into the conifer plantation. It's like a line, isn't it? It stops. It just stops. Hardwoods, hardwood parklands, and hardwood-based meadows yield rich soils and rich biodiversity, much food. Conifers give a soil covered with sphagnum moss. No blooms, no blossoms, almost nothing in the way of herbaceous plants. I don't see one plant growing on the sphagnum moss that's still in bloom, and it's only about October 9 or 10 right now. A few ferns that can tolerate the acidity of the soil and a few mushrooms and that's it that's it here at the start of the conifer plantation right at the very start you can see the damage in action these conifer plantations might be green it might technically be woods but these are dead zones they do not feed wildlife. They do not really help wildlife. Conifer forests, mixed into the hardwoods under natural circumstances, little patches here and there, where the trees can actually grow under normal circumstances, where they grow and establish themselves as first and second tier colonizers. Over time, the broadleaf trees take over and grow up around them. Then you have conifers growing in between them and they reestablish themselves when a natural forest fire happens. In those cases, the conifers contribute a tremendous amount to the forest. They hold back overgrowth, and they provide food to certain animals that feed specifically on them, such as the grouse. I hunt grouse, it's very common, you'll hunt grouse, you, uh, and when you clean them, you'll find bits of spruce inside of their gullets that they're eating, but there just isn't a lot that uh, can actually make use of these conifer plantations. The conifers, the conifer plantations, I'll say it again, I've said it many times, they're green deserts. If the conifer plantations are allowed to take over the areas of hardwoods, the fauna will die out. Everything from honeybees, bumblebees, other pollinators, deer, bears, they can't really use this type of ground. Here we can see the conifer plantation and the sphagnum moss. We trace over it, we have some blueberry, wild blueberry, its leaves are faded. And then as we push to the left, you can see some herbaceous growth. Most of that is wild forms of Asterichae. Looks mainly like fleabane. But we look over there, we can see that this was once rich soil, and we can see it in transition as it's being overtaken by the spreading sphagnum moss. The sphagnum moss growth is encouraged by the presence of the conifers, which acidify the soil and make it more beneficial to the sphagnum moss. The sphagnum moss will grow in these colonies, take over bit by bit, poison the soil. Now, blueberries like acidic soil, they can tolerate the sphagnum moss and the conifers just fine. But the presence of blueberries and conifers on ground that should be hardwood doesn't mean that things are right, it means that things are very wrong. The presence of sphagnum moss and blueberries on ground that should be a meadow near a hardwood forest indicates that the soil is ruined.